Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update for Monday the 17th of July. I'm recording this on Friday the 14th of July. My name is Trevor Neal. I'm search analyst at RRG Research and I'm coming to you today from London. Today we're uh, just going to have a brief look at asset classes to make sure that we're in the right area and focusing our money into the, in the right areas of the market where there are opportunity and then we're going to have our usual round of looking at the global stock indices but then the big uh, one I think I'd like to cover today is in the foreign exchange market after this big move uh, downwards in the dollar, dollar and um, uh, how that's looking on the charts. Now this is a relative rotation graph showing uh, uh, assets but as defined by uh, ETFs. So we can see the furthest from the right and the only one in the leading quadrant is the S&P, the S&P Spider um, and heading, still heading easterly uh, here. So that's a quite outstanding uh, uh, picture there. The Europe going all the wrong way. We saw that uh, weakening several weeks ago. This is a weekly chart, by the way, and, and it's going absolutely in the wrong direction, heading southwesterly, so weakening in its terms of its ratio against the MSCI world, which is the benchmark that we're using here. And likewise, the same with, with gold. Look at the length of the tails here, very long tails, so sweeping uh, from uh, the weakening quadrant that we recognize that uh, they were weakening and um, now into the lagging quadrant. So America, the place to be, Europe and gold uh, for the moment, not the place to be. It, the interest rates, bond market, also pressure, big pressure there. The commodities furthest to the west in here, spiraling around in a circle over on the side here. So still the opportunities are not in, the, in that sector as a whole. And then the small cap, long tail here. So it's swept around very quickly uh, from the lagging quadrant into the improving quadrant. It's heading northeasterly, so it's improving in both momentum and in ratio, but it's still too far away, in my opinion, from the 100 level uh, to draw any conclusion that it's going to be the next big thing. If it was around here and doing that, then I'd say it is, but uh, it could too easily turn back down again. But at the moment, there's an outstanding message, which is the, the best area to concentrate on is the, is the US stock. Looking at this another way very briefly, this is with major global indices and we see that of the US stocks, the NASDAQ is clearly still the winning one. The tail's a bit short here, but it's still moving in generally in the easterly direction, it means it's getting relatively stronger compared to the average of the stocks of the MSCI world. The Nikkei too is good, turning around a little bit, but that's benefiting from the currency. The Nifty has moved across into the leading quadrant, so that's something that Julius picked up a few weeks ago, that heading. The S&P is, if you like, okay. The Dow is a lagger there. The Russell 2, it's heading in the right direction, but it's way, way behind. It's very focused on the technology stocks. The European stocks bunching up together, the UK even worse, but they've moved from the weakening quadrant into the lagging quadrant, and the Hang Seng is still, unfortunately, the, the, the weakest of the lot. Now, it's a daily chart of the, the NASDAQ, and we've had a tremendous burst as we break through, broke through two important uh, resistance levels. This is from the April 2022, sorry, March uh, 2022, uh, high here, 15,229 it was. Then it, was, it caused resistance uh, uh, back here in June. We came back, uh, rallied to the previous high, so a very typical thing to do in, in an uptrend impulse. Uh, impulse reaction to the previous high and then up again retest bit of a wobble concerns waiting for important CPI data and that and employment data pull back and then now blasting through it here and absolutely strong so this now we come into the, back to the high of the end of uh, 221 the high itself was 16,799. It was, a, if you can remember it, it, was a head and shoulders top high, higher high, lower high in here. And then we broke these two lows and the market fell away very, very sharply down to its minimum price object, 
effective, but that left a consolidation area here, pretty close to where we are now, 15,590, these two lows in here, extending up to before we get to the high of 16,388. So this is an area, it should provide some resistance. So although we're moving up like a missile right now, we should see some resistance here. If it continues to behave this strong, look at that RSI there, absolutely rampant behavior there. It, if you bring it like this and look at a chart like that, it's it really looking as, as well. It's nearly crossing over, it will cross over as well. So a lot of power, beware that some resistance ahead but it's got a look on its face that is very bullish and looking like intent to make new highs. But just beware that ahead of it is, there may be trouble ahead. But look at that pattern there. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Higher lows, pulling back every time to the previous high and then holding and then going up. It's a lovely long-term uptrend. One for your album, your technical analysis album of beautiful chart patterns. Just a brief look at that neglected child, the Hang Seng. Because sign in the chart here, you saw in the in the RRG, it was around in the lagging quadrant there, but turning around a little bit here, and, and it is looking like it might be doing something to improve itself. On a relative basis, of course, it's still in a downtrend when other things are in an uptrend. But we've we've put in a low, lower low, and then a higher low. We've got a series of lower highs. I've put a dash line in it because they may be, they're not lining up uh, correctly, but they are lower than each other. But watch for a break of 20,000, that round number of 20,000 there. That might bring in buying and quickly flick around with a long tail and improve substantially. So there might be some potential from this underdog security for some rapid correction in it. That might be close. I think it might be close. Now the relative rotation graph, this is going back to a weekly sampling of the FANG plus group of stocks, the top 10 stocks, and the outstanding one is still NVIDIA, our old friend there. MD is looking pretty good. Tesla has come round really substantially here, long, long tail here, so we did pick that up. The other ones are all outperforming the averages of, the, of not the average, the S&P itself, so this is the best area to be. They're all in the, to, to the right of it, but not really showing great sort of independent strength in the way that NVIDIA is and Tesla is as well. This is a daily chart of the NVIDIA. We're in a deep blue sky here. This is the previous high, that line there, and we gap through it. A very powerful message, and it really is soaring up. We, we had to pull back here to the previous resistance, which was support, and now we've burst forth strongly through it. The, the MACD, which had crossed over downwards, let me get back to it here, is about to cross upwards again, saying the reaction's over. I think we know that. But the RSI, it showed it better by coming back to 50 and then rallying from from below 50 47 uh, correct that's the correction correction complete when it lifts off from there and so that was in here but it showed the correction was complete and now we're soaring up strongly and it's high yes it's close to 80 but the it's high and it's going up and it's getting strong and getting stronger so it's still very strong indeed it's a remarkable story this one since that october 2022 low that we had there and looks like it's going further deeper into the stratosphere Here's a ROG chart of the daily sampling of the major currencies versus the US dollar. And a big switch around here. Two weeks ago, I cautioned that Canadian dollar, Japanese yen trade looked to be over and the Canadian dollar has come right round from the leading quadrant into the weakening quadrant. The Japanese yen, which was heading southwest and in the lagging quadrant, swiftly with a very long tail flicked around and just moved into the leading quadrant. So good time, good job we got that message that the, that long, long time good trade pair was finished. But now we've got uh, the leaders here are the pound, the euro and the Swissy. So we've seen the, the effect of the fall in the dollar best, I think, in the euro and the pound. The euro has broken through that, that resistance level, the year's highs of roughly 111, and then 
It's surged through and it's now back at the best level since February 2002. It's even cracking this resistance now and it looks really set in to go up to the 115 level. I think this is looking exceedingly strong, supported at the highs, the breakout highs of um, uh, 111, I, I would say it was. And then we have the indicators have gone very bullish at this point, this breakout point, and you see the gap on the MACD is widening um, as we're getting more upside momentum and we're powering ahead on the RSI, small amount of uh, pro profit taking possibly in the short term, but still a lot of momentum here. And now I think it is targeting uh, that uh, 115 level. And finally, the pound. The pound soaring through its minor resistance at 128.50. Um, also, there was resistance at 130, big round number, and a series of lows there crashed through that. And it looks set now to go up to the 132.70, 132.80. It's a sort of zone there, but that's where the first major resistance comes in. It's uh, supported at 128.50. It's got a nice impulse reaction impulse, breakout, return to the, the previous resistance, now support, and, and then um, breaking out strongly here. The MACD is uh, very positive and the gap is widening, so it's getting increasing momentum on the upside and it's moving up, a little bit of profit taking in there, but it's still looking exceedingly good. And uh, really, I do think that we're headed towards that 133 level there and, and the March 2022 high as well. I will leave it there for this week and thank you very much for watching. We'll be back with you at the same time next week. It will probably be Julius. I'm pre I have presented to you from London so it's goodbye from Julius and I who are research directors at RG Research and may the trend be with you.